All right. God desires us to go through the, uh, not to go through the motions of uh, worship. He has, he's intending for us to have an obedient heart, okay? Based on the sacrifice made by Jesus Christ, the actual word, okay, in a strong concordance or the, or the Hebrew dictionary, for worship is shaka, uh, reference number 7812. And it actually means literally to prostrate yourself in homage to royalty or God, to fall flat on the floor in reverence. I also gave you this, these scriptures, okay? Uh, and each one of them, the actual Hebrew word is shaka, which we call, or it translates into worship. However, what's interesting about this is that uh, it does not translate worship, okay? It, it translates basically throwing yourself down, reverencing or honoring a person above yourself. And there's a reason why I'm getting to this, okay? None of it is directly dealing with emotion, rather recognition of importance uh, in an intimate manner, okay? But in regards to position and respect, not necessarily this, this high emotionally charged, I worship you guy kind of a thing. It's more of a decision to be obedient or a decision to be respectful. Kind of like uh, in the Asian uh, continents, it's very common in the Orient for people to bow, okay, in, in respect to one another, okay? Now, <clears throat> whenever the word is used towards God, it's translated as shaka, the word shaka. Uh, for instance, here we have a, a scripture, Numbers, Numbers 22, verse 31. Bow down as a sign of, of deep reverence and respect, and it could be done also culturally. Now, most of the scriptures that we've been looking at from the Old Testament, of course, all scripture is in Hebrew, all right? There is some Greek translations of the Old Testament, but please understand that all the original scriptures in the Old Testament, which actually are in higher academics, is referenced to as the Hebrew scriptures because they were written in Hebrew, okay? However, the New Testament was written in Greek, in the Greek language, in Koine Greek, by the way. Uh, and the strong, concord, uh, the strong dictionary, the Greek dictionary, the number is 4352. The worship uh, word is proskuneo, okay? Now, keep on looking at the word, the, 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 the prefix, pros, all right? Can you see? Well, see, carefully. Okay. Now it means to go down on knees in worship, respect, or fall face first to the ground, prostrated, okay? To kiss the hands, to fall on the knees, to pay homage to one another, uh, to one of a superior rank, all right? So it is possible to have, uh, and we see it in scripture, where people do say shaka to other people besides God. Okay? But it's not in the sense of reverent worship as a deity, but it's just as respect. However, uh, almost predominantly, when there is, it is recorded in scripture that people, the word is shaka for worship, and they prostrate themselves. For instance, Samson's parents do that. And, and then people say, like, see, they're prostrating themselves, and they're prostrating themselves to other people besides God. But when you actually look at the scripture and you study it carefully, it's a Christophany, which means the appearance of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Whenever you see the, the word, the angel of the Lord, okay, uh, it's just, I believe the, and I can't remember if it's the NIV or the King James Version, but it will actually say that it will be capitalized. The angel of the Lord. Okay? Lord, okay, referencing in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word would be uh, Jehovah. The angel of the Lord, it is capitalized, and it's not just a regular angel that's appearing, it's actually Jesus Christ appearing in the Old Testament, all right? So that's why you, you see a sense of worship to him and bowing down to him. Uh, when uh, Daniel's friends get thrown in the fiery furnace, all right, if you know that story, Jesus Christ appears there. That is a Christophany. He is appearing in the Old Testament, right? Uh, so, proskudeo means to throw yourself down in deep reverence, face first, okay? 
In this action, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary elaborates excessive admiration for someone, reverence to a divine being or power in a religious setting, giving honor and respect to someone else or anything being above or greater than us. Now, how we come to praise or worship is not the same thing, but the object is both. The, but the object of both is the same. Okay. For instance, praise. Okay, we lift someone or something up in celebration. Worship, we make ourselves low and admire and honor others above ourselves, granting obedience and their admiration. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 8 through 11, this is from the New King James Version. The four living creatures, now this is in, in, in the apocalypse, okay? The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Okay? Now, this is not in your notes, but whenever we see the little, and, and we already know, we're not going to go into details, because obviously it's referencing the seraphim, and we've talked about that, correct? Okay. Now, <clears throat> whenever we see this picture of heaven, uh, I want you to note down, okay, because it's not in your, in, in your notes, but I want you to note down how the seraphim will say, it three times. Holy, holy, holy. God bless you. Uh, because it's referencing that God is one God, but he is three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? And they're worshiping the triune God. All right? But it's one God, though. It's three persons, but one God. Lord God Almighty who was and is to come whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne. He lives forever and ever. The 24, now here we, we go on to the 24 elders. Now we're, talk, we're talking about the seraphim. Before we go on, I do want to answer uh, one thing that some people uh, always come with. Some people always come up with some crazy arguments. For instance, they'll start saying, you can't say that angels sing. Oh, there you go. I heard angels singing with you all. You know? And all those Christmas carols, angels we have heard on high, and you know, the angels singing. The Bible doesn't say that angels sing. Where can you prove that angels sing? I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible never says that angels sing. I went through the whole Bible. I, I, I can tell you, I, like, I, when people say, well, how do you know? I don't know, maybe I, 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 unless I've missed it several times. I read the Bible several times. From cover to cover, I read it in different formats. I read it from just uh, by by character. I read it by topic. I read it. so I read the Bible several times to tell you I screened the Bible, and the Bible never says that angels sang. Okay, does that mean that angels don't sing? No, it just tells us this is a glimpse of what God is showing us. Now, some of, of the theologians that like to argue about these kind of things, they say that because in order to sing. You have to use, for those of you that are, uh, have some music background, you have the minor notes, okay, and then you have your major notes, and, and the minor notes are the dark tones, okay, but they usually come out because of sadness, okay, uh, you know how you can hear a song that already is invoking you, some kind of temperament, some kind of ambiance, you understand? Uh, because of the tone of what it's of the harmony that it's using. All right. Now, <clears throat> the Bible doesn't say that. Okay, the Bible does not talk about that music theory, but they say, for instance, that's why creation, the, the birds sing, all that kind of stuff, because we're all suffering because of sin. Angels have not fallen. Angels are before the Lord. Okay, so therefore they cannot sing. Okay, I think that's drawing too much out of what the Bible doesn't talk about at all. All right, but uh, there you go. You know, uh, I don't believe that uh, angels cannot sing, but I am also not going to stand here and say the Bible says that angels sing. All right, because just like the Bible doesn't say uh, God is the Trinity, the Bible never says that. But we just finished reading a scripture where it clearly shows us that God is one God in three persons. All right? Uh, so we, we, there's different things. The Bible doesn't say, it doesn't specifically, there's a, a lot of Christians that believe in, in the rapture. All right? 
Uh, not everyone believes in the rapture. The rapture means that Jesus is going to, it's part of eschatology, that Jesus is going to come and rapture the church before the, the tribulation, okay? There's people that say that's not true. It's not in the Bible, but yet in, in Thessalonians it says that, you know, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then we who are alive will be caught up with the Lord, and in Latin, the word caught up means rapturas, okay? Be raptured up, all right? So we don't necessarily see a lot of doctrine spelled out in scripture, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. Did you have a question? Yeah, um, well, how about like how the devil was like an angel that was like the praise, mm -hmm. was it just music, like no verbal to it, or? Exactly, uh, that I think that there was verbal, there had to be verbal, because when we're saying, you know how the Bible says this, look at this here, okay, uh, for instance, it says, Okay, the, the preacher said we're all, and it, it says they were singing. It doesn't say they were singing. I don't, I don't imagine that just being said, holy, holy. I mean, Correct. I imagine it like. Uh -huh. Being sung, okay, mm -hmm. or being produced, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we are living in a dimension that I, when we're looking at this, it's a dimension we have nothing, no idea about. Uh, I think it was Stephen Curtis Chapman, I don't know if it was him or not, and he wrote a song and he says it's like smelling the, uh, it's like smelling the color purple. Do you understand what I'm saying? How does purple smell? How does yellow taste? See, we're, we're talking about a dimension we are not there yet, okay? There's things that our, 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 our mortal body cannot fully experience yet. Okay, because we're limited, all right? So I believe there is, where I think we're going to be surprised. I, I believe we're going to be surprised. I don't want to add more to the word of God, but when you read the book of Revelations, it talks about creatures living out there. And I'm not talking about the elders. I'm not talking about the seraphim. I'm talking about creatures as in animals, okay? Jesus Christ is coming in a white horse. Uh, but is it a white horse the way we think it? I don't know. Do you understand that? It could be. It might not. I don't know. Correct. Because our imagination is limited. And I think that's what's so exciting about God is that there's way more out there that we're not even close to finding out. That we're going to know, like the Bible says, when we're there, we're going to know all things, you know. But up to then, our imagination is all we can go to. And that is limited, all right? And he's, he's given us a very in-depth imagination, some of us more, okay? Um, all right, let's go on. So it says, now we are, we, we are going to pause there with, with the seraphim. Let's go on with the elders, all right? The 24 elders fall down before him. Now no, notice what it says. They what? They fall down before him who sits on the throne and what? Worship him. The word worship is proskuneo. And of course, now it's giving you the details that the action, the actual action is what? Falling down. Now this is what's awesome, okay? This is why I'm saying that you can't necessarily deny angels the possibility to sing. Because the elders are not angels. But what does it say here? And cast their crowns before the throne. What? Does it say singing? No, it says what? Sing. So when you have these critics that say, oh, angels don't sing. Well, here it says that the elders aren't singing either. It doesn't mean that they can't sing, all right? So if they could, they could not. I don't know, all right? But what's interesting here is with worship, the actual prostration, okay, of throwing yourself down, is that you're making God higher. It's all about God. And notice that they say that they are, what are they doing? They take off their crowns and they what? Cast it before the Lord. Because, write this down or put it there in your notes, okay? When we put his will over our own will and we submit and obey in submission as a wife submits to her husband, so the church submits to Christ in all things. It is the church totally submitting every possible beauty and, and ability or any quality that we can get any praise for. And throwing it at his feet and saying, whatever good I have is nothing compared to the goodness that you are. I am not worthy to stand before you and say, hey, 
hey, guess what? Me too. Mm -mm. It's all about whoever sits on the throne, and it is the king of kings. Now notice that it's king of what? Kings, because he has made you and I kings and priests, a royal priesthood, right? And the Bible says that we will receive a crown, but that crown is nothing compared to the glory of God, to worshiping God, okay? It's not about us. A, a little parenthesis as where we haven't even touched music yet, all right? But write this down in regards to whether you're part of a worship ministry or you are part of helping a ministry in regards to worship. It should never get to the point that you are drawing so much attention to yourself because during worship, it should all be about the Lord. If, okay, it is too much about you, it's not worship. It's entertainment. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, it's called Christian entertainment. There's nothing wrong with that. It glorifies God. Yes, it does. But it's Christian inter entertainment, not worship. Because worship should be very simple. What are the, what's the chorus of worship here? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It can't be so complicated that we are lost and we let someone else take over. No, it's something that everyone can come in and worship God in simplicity, but powerness. And in that, and God is worthy, he gets all the recognition, okay? So it's total submission. Remember that the mirror of, of the relationship between husband and wife is between the groom and the bride, Jesus and the church. And, and it goes on to say, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating of all of yourself, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intellect, act of what? Worship. So worship is not just necessarily music. That's right. It is the way we are what? Living is worship. Okay? And do not be conformed to the world any longer. That is part of the fasting though, okay? You have to get away from what, what draws us from the world. And I'm not saying that those things are bad because we live in the world. You understand that? But how are we going to get conformed to Christ if we're always in the world? Okay? And it says, okay, do not be conformed to the world any longer with its superficial values and what? Customs. Because everything we do is a custom. All right? So uh, then let's go on. But be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your what? Mind. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. Here's your fast. Okay? So that you may prove for yourself that the will of God, what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Notice the importance of ourselves being as a sacrifice and live in obedience as a basic introduction for worship. But Samuel, here's another example of worship, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Worship is to live in obedience to the truth of God's word, knowledge of God, and his word as a couple knows each other in words and needs. To live in an intimate relationship with communication through prayer and intensity to hear from God and be holy. To show a deep awe and admiration and draw God to an encounter with a song of worship or exaltation of his attributes. Here's a scripture. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Now, what is this? Part of worship is what? Our obedience, sacrifice, but it also includes a joyful what? Song. It is, music is part of worship. And I, I, I share this because, again, here are the, the Greek renditions and the Hebrew renditions of how we get the word worship in the New Testament and the Old Testament. And what we have is we have people that say worship has nothing to do with music. 
Worship has nothing to do with emotion, and therefore these churches uh, totally leave out praise and worship from their services. It's just pretty sad, all right? But let's go on. We all have these, okay? But the main one is uh, Shaka to prostate to ha and homage, homage, and proskuneo to prostate, okay? Now, in Latin, we have the word cults, all right? A lot of people don't know this. They hear the word cult, they get scared. But the, in Spanish, when you have, you know, like, lit, work, I should have put this backwards. What do they say? When do you all meet, okay? When do you all meet for Word of Life Church? We meet on Sundays, and what is that called? The Sunday what? Service. We have service. Do you have service on another day? Yes, we do. When? Tuesday. You understand that? But why do we call it service? Okay. Where do we get that from? In Spanish, though, when you look at in Spanish, in the Spanish churches, or in the Spanish uh, world, when they say, when do you have your service? They actually say, cuando tienen el culto? They say culto, which comes from the word cult, which means worship. Cult means worship, okay? Now, worship is not the slow song that the choir sings. Please understand that. Just because of song, because most people think praise and worship is the one where we're like this, woo, yeah, all right? And worship is the one that's, oh, I'll be emotional now. Oh, hallelujah, you understand that? It's touching me, okay? No, worship is not the slow song that the choir sings. Defined by the priority we place on who God is in our lives and where God is on our list of priorities. True worship is a matter of the heart expressed through lifestyle of holiness. We worship God because He is God, period. Our extravagant love and extreme submission to the Holy One flows out of the reality that God loved us first, worthy simply because of His identity as omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent one. This is from Dr. Uh, Kinnisbro. Uh, and she wrote this um, article in Christianity Today. Now, notice that it's all about the attributes of what who God is. You see that? It's not about us anymore. Okay? Uh, worship, this is what I put, worship is a lifestyle of obedience to the word and sacrifice of Christ Jesus on the cross. Worship is our life as a living sacrifice for our Heavenly Father. Worship, song, and music is a reflection on who we live for, his attributes, nature, and just who he is. It is the invitation to the manifested presence of God as we congregate as a church to worship him as one bride who loves the groom, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to think about this. This is all worship in the sense of Having the manifested presence of God. And, it, and the thing is, that is where we're getting to already. The manifested presence of God. But up to right now, we study all about worship. All about uh, what is it, you know, how do we get there, what it's not, what it is, okay? But there is people again, and you need to know this, that will say that worship is about practice of lifestyle and Christianity, not song. But again, I, I, I take you back, okay? Usually, just look at the screen. The people that usually have this criticism are called, they call themselves conservative Christians. That is a very uh, word that's very loosely used. Because if you ask me, I believe I'm a conservative Christian. But in the actual literal terms, conservative Christians are the ones that say, uh, no music, you come in here, you're, you're very serious, and it's almost like walking into a funeral, all right? You're conservative, and that's why you say well, he's a very conservative person. Not necessarily that we're conserving the true doctrine or the true practice of the church. Uh, really, what I like to call them and what they're really known for is called the cessationists. Cessationists meaning they do not believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for today. They do not believe in emotionalism, okay? So, got two minutes, all right? Yes, ma'am. All right. They claim that the literal term of worship is all about obedience and nothing to do with music. The last lecture we saw how shaka, which translates to worship in the Bible, can be translated in various forms as giving honor to a higher power or respect for another. 
However, the Hebrew words, depending on the context, determine how it is determined and not uh, tr translated, all right? And this is what we're looking at in regards to the word Elohim, all right? Uh, could we have an extension of five minutes, Pastor? Just five minutes? Or no? No? All right. Yeah, he's got to come in right away. All right, look, out, look over your notes, okay? Um, and, and I will try to rush as much as possible next time, all right? Uh, but yes, the thing is that they, just to wrap it up, Okay, if that's the situation, then why do we have the Levites playing instruments in worship in the temple and in the tabernacle? So yes, it is obedience, but it's also songs of worship. Okay. Any questions? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for having us here this night safely and sound, and thank you because we have an opportunity, Lord, to seek you and and get to know you more. Lord, I thank you for all the wonderful things that you'll be doing in the lives of these future ministers. I thank you, Lord God, because you're preparing them and you're working in their life already to be leaders, Lord God, in the kingdom, ambassadors for you, but over everything, to guide your people to experience your presence in worship and in praise. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for this night and we thank you for FBBC as well. Amen.